Welcome back to uh, our channel, Planetary Intelligence. And today we are joined by the wonderful uh, Jake Parsons, who uh, I've gotten to know over the past month and his wonderful work on his YouTube channel. Uh, and I feel so blessed to connect with you, uh, Jake. And um, we're going to just explore and talk about some of your work and just let it flow, right? We were already kind of talking before this and uh, yeah, we, we kind of went straight in. And uh, so, yeah, welcome. And please tell us a little bit about yourself uh, so that our viewers can get to know you a little bit better. What's up, brother? Um, yeah, you know, this is, it's awesome. And I'm honored to talk to you and connect with um, a brother and meet you again for the first time in this lifetime face to face. Um, you know, you have a guitar right there in the background, and I have one that's right here on the wall. Uh, I have a tiger on my chest, and you have tiger stripes on your arm. It's amazing at this point in reality where we can see each other above the waters of culture. And as the level of reality lowers, the vibration lowers, those of us who are still in resonance and still are authentic true selves in line with soul and spirit and source we can see each other so clearly now it's never been easier to find each other um so for that i'm so thankful so grateful and we are blessed man and uh mm -hmm. it's been a really good journey and a pleasure really becoming your friend and your brother again bro likewise for real. brother likewise i feel like uh there's a re reunite a reunification uh, of of these uh, individual star seeds, so to speak, that we we call star seeds, and we are all connecting at this moment in time. I think it's also to do with the correction of Gaia Sophia. Um, we're kind of aligning, and you know, the, her her energy is expressing through us in our unique uh, in, path of individuation. So I'm very grateful, very very grateful. Yes, and uh, you know, with with the talk that we had before we started recording and even the talk that we're gonna have, uh, it's amazing to have these conversations face to face, even though we're through technology, we have to use the systems available because they're using them against us. So we, all of this stuff, it's only tools to be used in our becoming. They can, uh, be hurdles they can hold us up but when we align with ourselves and our little portion of destiny and purpose uh none of this stuff matters you know it doesn't matter if they're monitoring you and i speaking right now because just by listening their vibration will be raised so mm -hmm. that's why it's important um to when we see each other what on especially on platforms like social media that we act authentically and real and you do and i do as well and that's what i love you know I, when you and i interact when i see i judge people also by how they interact with others you know mm -hmm. um by the comments people leave it doesn't matter i'd rather see three comments of someone's true uh true words true feelings than a million fake bot likes and thumbs up and comments and you Errol, uh, our brother Ali, all of these guys, they're, they're good, pure souls. We have, all, we're, we're all here together now in this end game. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's like we've become the Avengers. And you don't have to be Iron Man because you, you could be my Iron Man, bro. You know, we're all doing the same thing and raising the frequency in our own ways. So now, more than ever, that this past year has shown us who the real ones are, who the true ones are, and in my opinion, what we have to do to survive. And that's by adding a deep, deep layer of meaning, which is using everything we see, the world falling apart for building us up in our path to individuation. Mm, beautifully said, absolutely. And um, 
Yeah, this 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 ties in with, uh, and I'm also very grateful to uh, John Lam Lash's work, which has been a great influence, along with uh, Michael Tassarian, who mm -hmm. not a lot of people really talk about in this movement. And uh, he's done some great work to uncover uh, also the psychological aspects uh, uh, and tying that in with the conspiratorial, the symbological, the esoteric. He ties it all in too. And uh, they're both different um, perspectives to align into that path of individuation to give us that insight. Um, I don't, I'm not sure, Jake, if you watched um, uh, John Lamlash's most recent uh, video on his, on his channel. He talked about the nine loves. Okay. Um, and uh, the nine loves he mentioned uh, were... Uh, the the love arrows of... the elite yeah the elite the... arrows yeah but no this one this one's more about the values of love so okay. he says that we have to love these nine things um and that uh the anthropos in the path of uh, the values of the love of of the anthropos a11 mm -hmm. not a10 because <laughs> they're they're being left behind but uh uh so the the first uh one he mentioned is the love of truth uh, the love of freedom and the love of beauty. He says that these three things are the foundations. You don't need religion or theology. Then he goes into the love of innocence and the love of uh, pleasure because we are a playful and ingenuous species. Mm -hmm. uh, and they kind of complement each other. And then he went on to say, number six and number seven, the love of learning and the love of sharing. Again, those two complement and they enhance and enrich each other, as he said. And the eighth, eighth one is the love of power, but not the love of power over others, but the love of power with others and through others, uh, with the exception uh, of the love of the power over others against the enemies of life <laughs> right yeah so that's the one ex exception um and then the final one being the love of the mystery you know love the mystery uh, the mystery guides you the the mystery tells you the way uh the mystery, the mystery is my story mm, beautiful yes yes that's a really great one yeah so you really have yeah of course you have to love it i mean i've always loved the mystery my story and not my the history, story. his story. <laughs> I never yeah, looked at the, the word play like that. Uh, that's really mm -hmm. insightful. Yeah, so loving the mystery of, of yourself, but also loving the mystery in others as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously the mystery of nature and, and, and the experience of rea this reality anyway that we are experiencing. Uh, so those are the nine loves. But um, I felt... Perfect. I mean, I, I had an, you know, call it an, an insight. My own insight, I felt there was one more missing. And I felt that that one should be the love of creativity. Yeah. Beautiful. So, so um, you know, we've got to love our creativity. And I think only in creativity do we merge the masculine and feminine archetypes in, mm -hmm. into one because you're creating in the process of the alchemization of this inspiration you're receiving from the ether so to speak and then you're putting it out into the physical world as music mm -hmm. writing or whatever it is you do in, in your creative endeavors so yeah just thought i'll share that i don't know why but... i love it i love it yeah and I, and i absolutely agree with you brother um I would love to see one of your videos. You really do a good deep dive and do a video on those 10 um, loves, great loves, you know, because I have that video of, I wish I had a cool accent and a really cool way of talking like you do, where I could say, um, but I say, you do Gaia. have a cool accent. It's so, no, it's <laughs> Sophia, you know, but I have uh, that video, Sophia's, um, I think it was like Sophia's story, Sophia's dreaming or whatever it is. Sophia's simulation. That's what it that's is. That's it. On my I've channel. watched that one. Really We're, great. It's, it's an all inspired by John Lamb Lash's work. And I would love to see yours because it, it's just funny. 
yours would be the tenth, you know, the the one out of nine, which is my channel's the one hundredth monkey. That's what I'm all about. That's what it's all mm-hmm. about is that effect of that one changing the consciousness of the all. All it takes is just that extra drop for the cup to o- overflow. You know, that little ingredient where you saw some. That's why we're all here. That's why we're all individuals. Where you can read his creation and compound on top of it. And with your own creation, you're not destroying it. You're not perverting it like they do. You're um, increasing its energy and its, its outreach. And to me, that's the, the, the beauty and what we are doing and what we all have the ability to do with mm. all the conspiracy, all the, all the backstory and backdrop we've built over the years. Now we can create and creation truly is alchemy. It, and like you said, it is the place where we harmonize and balance the feminine and the masculine, which also would be represented by the soul and the spirit or the material world and the spiritual world. Mm. And only through creating in this physical reality, right? We can't have, um, we have a lot of people who want to just do podcasts for hours. And I, I get it. I love it. I love talking to you for an hour. It's needed. But it's also important to create what you feel is art, to put beauty to your beliefs, to express your way with emotion. And through this spiritual output and imagination, we have to mix in the material realm. And through this infusion of spirit and material, when we create it, whether it's putting pen to paper, the way we speak right now, the way I move, the way somebody dances, um, that is how you infuse meaning to matter and Mm. spirit into solid form. Mm. Beautifully said. Yeah. It's like a... Again, it rep- it's like it represents the creativity. It's like it represents the fire, you know, the, the elements Absolutely. of fire. Prometheus is fire. Mm. That's really the intellect. The imagination is where is the true fire of the divine. I, I do believe, you know, that's where we have all the power. Mm. You just, you know, the beautiful story you told me earlier, man, is just amazing about you breaking free from the, crown of control from this uh, digital demiurge, the illusion that we're in, and just seeing and feeling and acting out, whether it's in the dreamscape, dream reality of the DMT world that we all go to every night, that we all go to when we meditate, um, Mm. whether it's only there or it's actually happening in some other dimension, in some other universe, or right now, the it's just like ptsd i'm a fireman i've been a fireman for 14 years of course i have ptsd i've seen terrible things we all do and what you learn through psychology is it doesn't matter if it's happening now or if it really happened if you believe it did if you feel it if psychologically you you are living that reality the same thing it's the same uh has the same effect at least on your psyche and on Mm. your soul So um, we really, with creating art, we're able to express these things and see them clearly. And it's all in how we tell our story. I I don't know what your um, astrological sign is. I'm a Pisces and my life path is an 11. So Mm. I'm a Sagittarius and my life path (laughs) is number five. So yep, yeah, yeah, makes sense. And you see through these patterns and your, your own potential and your own ability. Um, It's all in the way we tell our story. It's all in the narrative, uh, the rhetoric that we give to our words. When we speak to ourselves, when we speak to others, when we speak to God, um, whether we come to him uh, on our knees, because praying is just like begging. It just depends on your intention. It doesn't matter if you're on your knees or on your feet. It's all about intention and awareness and um, aligning yourself with creation, with source and love and harmony with yourself, really. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn to tell 
a good story, a beautiful story, write your own. And that's what you do. And, um, and I love it, man. I, I really commend you for that. And it's important when we go through our darkness to share it with others and to share it with ourselves, because even when you just write down in this last video I wrote and put on today, um, I tell everybody just the, the best advice that I could give anyone is try to write down your story, write the worst thing that has ever happened to you down in a journal and go back and rewrite it again. Put, put a different view on it, write it from the villain, write it from a different perspective. Even rewriting it a month later, you'll see the story has changed a little bit because every cell in our body is truly uh, purged and cleansed and reborn every eight years. Mm. So the memories, all of these things are no longer here. They wash away. The only thing keeping them here is us. Our, mm -hmm. My body is not even the same body as it was 10 years ago neither is yours but we are mm. the same self i've always been me you've always been you um i'm just remembering more mm. it's like an unfolding of, of a mm -hmm. of a bud that's been closed because of this trauma we close and we contract and tense because of this uh trauma that we're faced with when we come into this world and it's still the same bud it's just that it flowers and it opens and it's it's almost like this infinite, uh, when you, when it start that path of individuation, it's like, it's constantly unfolding. There's new layers of this, these petals that come out the next petal and the next petal and so on. The petals just keep unfolding and you think, wow, what a mystery, <laughs> you know, it's an unfolding thing and there's no end to it, no beginning and no end to it. Um, it's an incredible realization. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, speaking about your story about the PTSD, um, you know, we all have it, like you said, we have it from the, the school, s public schooling system, you know, as children, as young, uh, growing adults as well, you know, why are you late for, why are you late for uh, your class? You know, where's your homework? You, you know, this sort of authority s speaking down on you because you're small then and you're kind of looking mm -hmm. up at this. So you have the, 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 the physical representation of this sort of seemingly intimidating authority telling you you're wrong. But um, I always knew in school there was, I was always a rebel. I don't know why, yeah. but I, I never performed greatly at school. Yeah, um, me too. So uh, that, that is a form. And, and, you know, for me as well, the, the biggest one on my, in my ancestral line was violence. My father was very physically violent to me. Um, I think I've mentioned it before in previous podcasts. He almost almost killed me twice. So I had that PTSD to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. After, you know, after I, I became, well, got into my, my uh, adulthood, so to speak. And, but then as I was exploring these psychological and some, the knowledge started coming in of self, then I realized, hold on a minute. Of course, his father abused him and almost killed him. And then I found out later that was the case. Um, so he was just reenacting his trauma onto mm -hmm. his, his child that his father gave to him. Um, so it's this PTSD, if you leave it unchecked, or trauma, we call it that. We give it so many different names, but it's, yeah. it's trauma. And that realization made me realize to see it like you said about writing the story but writing it from the perspective of the villain it's mm -hmm. like i saw it from my father's side i started going oh damn like now i see what state you are in here you are mm -hmm. you've left your home country in iraq you went through a stage of war because they were at war at the time the iran iraq war you went through these two two different countries in the middle east and you ended up in Norway, we lived there for um, four, four to five years. And that's when the, the physical and mental abuse started. Uh, and that's a trauma in and of itself. So that triggers mm -hmm. the instability. And you start to see it from the villain's perspective, so to speak. And I've done the best I could now with my father. I've, I've healed and I've forgiven him. And... Um, but that the main thing is that you're able to make peace with that, that trauma and then reenact or, or 
use creativity to transmute that suffering into a form of wisdom, right? Yep. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, it seems we all, we have a lot of, a lot of us go through similar paths to get here. And, uh, it is that the, I, I always used to say, I play the fool to catch the wise and really a fool in his folly. If he continues long enough, will become a wise man. As long as he shares it with others and learns from the lessons and these PTSD, what, what you just described is a good example of the infinite un unfolding of our energy that we express through life. Mm -hmm. And just like those patterns of violence, like a ripple, you know, some, a stone being thrown in still water and these ripples spread out and they echo over time. Um, we need to do that with beautiful things with love, you know? Um, so that way, when you have the ability and you're given the opportunity to remedy those situations to when you get triggered to react, how those old patterns and these old traumas want you to react. When you take your power back and you respond with positivity and love, you're creating a pattern just like that PTSD that's going to reverberate through time, through eternity, through your genetics, through your children, through our psychology, um, through everything. So through these through trauma, it's easy for people to understand the endlessness, the eternity of energy and how it can't be destroyed. It's just transmuted and changed. And that when the evil's done by, say, the elite or, or just the terrible, they will continue until we stop it, until we stand in front of it and transmute it to something beautiful. And the more beauty we can put out, the more infinite and internal creation and imagination and resonance will spread. And so what you've done is all we can do. That's our job here. That's the only way to defeat the devil is to twist his words against himself, really. Mm -hmm. You know, um, let the sins make the saints and let the devil make the gods because he's going to do that to you. He's going to twist all of our words into evil, into something, into weapons to harm us. They try. That's what censoring is about. That's what uh, social shaming is about. It's by twisting the narrative and nothing more. Usually none of this stuff in the real world happens to us physically in, in real life. Very few people um, come in contact with true catastrophe and evil and death until it's the end, you know? Um, I've seen probably 300 people die. I've tried to save probably 200. I maybe have saved three. So it's, you see, I, I see the worst. And I know for a fact, most people do not think about life until death. Hmm. Now we need to think about death throughout all of our life so that we can live it fully so that we don't fear it, so that death is as normal as blinking or going to sleep. Mm. Um, and when we live like that, we live free, we live creative, we live uh, large, you know, we can be heard and seen in ways that you can, you know, I could see you, I could, I could feel who you are through a brief interaction on, on fake social media, because you are you, and you're using all of this to just show a more perfect picture of who you are and how you feel. Mm. And that's really all we can do, man. Absolutely. Well, it takes one to know one, Jake. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know. Yeah. That's how we're able to uh, recognize each other and, and see each other, even though we were complete strangers, you yep. know, um, up until about a month ago, we just noticed and, and gone, Oh, there's a unique authentic expression. Authentic can see authentic. Yep. Where inauthentic will see authentic as threatening and mm. um, yeah, and fe fearing because it's it's it, it 
the reflection of the authentic to the inauthentic will um, reflect their fear. Mm -hmm. You know, in that way, and I, I see that when in my interactions with certain people in my life, in my daily life, when I'm expressing myself authentically. Um, well, I, I, I do my best to always be in that state. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you can't do anything for them. All you can do is, is be who you are. And you, you, your hope is that your reflecting onto them will spark something in their imagination and themselves that will, will get them questioning into that self-inquiry. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a journey, man. It's a journey. It's it is. And you do it, you do it well. And that's, that's like we were saying earlier, um, to do it with love and, and when you are create to do it with comedy to do it lightheartedly because really all of this is if we when people fight when we all go through these stages i'm a i've started playing guitar when i was eight eventually you get to a stage where you can just solo like crazy and every time you get a chance you want to just shred and blow somebody's head off with a killer solo but eventually you learn to be tasteful you learn to hold back, you learn to be wise and to just to give it things what they need and not what you want and force your will upon things. And, and you learn how to kind of synchronize with the symphony and and to make music with the masses. Um, and what you do is you've learned. I know you have. There's no, I see a lot of this now with people and I understand it where they want to fight about masks. They want to, they want to fight fear with force. They want to, they're creating dissonance and they're going to, they're creating trauma. Um, they're coming from a place of wounding, a, a place of, um, you know, they're on edge. They're, mm -hmm. they're in protection mode. So they're defending their beliefs. They're defending their reality instead of just conveying their reality conveying their beliefs you know like we with our words and our interactions need to just paint a beautiful picture of our perspective and show it to them whether it's through comedy through lightheartedness through a text to your loved one when you usually would argue with them or ignore them um that to me is where we're at right now in the world where a lot of people are still fighting the future fighting for the future there is no future it's only now so mm. it, you cannot be so you can't get there using the same crap that got us here nothing from the system will save itself it's not it's in one of Moore's laws you we have to operate from within from the only place that's safe from this outside world once we do that and operate in the now and stop worrying about whether these vaccines are going to self spread to all of us and yeah, it might happen, but our water is poisoned, our skies are being chemtrailed, our food, our GMO food has created GMO people. It's mm -hmm. not about this world. It's about the spirit and the soul and creation and we're getting close. There's more and more of you out there that are getting um, to the point where we can see that, where we can see, like, it doesn't matter if we argue and prove that this is a hoax and a, or a pandemic, because I can't even convince most people that the moon landing was fake. <laughs> and it's about the obvious, most obvious thing. You know what I mean? I could, I could teach my seven, my seven year old would be able to be like, yeah, that's not real but most people are so entranced and indoctrinated there's no point to argue over these details anymore and to to try to push your truth through lecturing people and now nah, it mm -hmm. it didn't work for religion and it's not going to work for us mm -hmm. what we have to do is push the truth the the tasteful enticing way of like fiction which is what i try to do with uh, and I'm, I'm, you do it with your videos too, um, where you put put these truths in fiction in a me, uh, meta narrative kind of. You know, 1984 wrote the future because if you can 
put enough out there, something to change the timeline like that, man, it will manifest it. It seems like that's, it seems like fiction writes reality way more than anything that we try to do. Hmm. You know, eventually we'll be living Star Wars, whether we want to try to fight it or not. And it's crazy, <laughs> but, but so we need to start writing our own versions of, of a future we love. I challenge anyone to find me a movie that shows the future that's, that's truly good, that's spiritual, that's whole, that's a place you would want to live. Every single vision of the future we have been given so far is a dystopia. Mm. So we got to stop that by, by imagining a bad future. We are only confirming a bad past. So we got to wipe both slates clean. And right now, just focus on making now perfect. Mm. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's absolutely the, the, the path, you know, the path that we should we should be taking right now. And, and it is the creative path, isn't it? The, the fiction writes the reality in a way is that it's the inner to the outer again. It's this sort of the alchemization of, of, of um, envisioning what you want and then going and acting on that in the present moment to create it. So I think, yeah, definitely. It's beautifully said there, Jake. Beautifully said. <laughs> That's why you really need to write and make this, I'm, I'm excited for it, the video with that 10th love of yours, you know, because that truly is, it. that's what's been missing. And the people you said, you know, John Lamb Lash, I have his book right over there and Michael Tessari and David Icke, a lot of these people, I love them and I'm so thankful for them. And now we just need to, to, put the capstone on the the pyramid of power that they've built for us um because what this guy named colin wilson wrote this book called the outsider it's a beautiful book and it was about the greats and people like nietzsche like young like david hike like michael Tesserian, like all these people who who find the deepest meaning of truth and the deepest truths about this reality they become cynical mm. usually they need substances just like us, you know, it, we all need to quiet that, that higher mind sometimes, that cr constant critic in order to just enjoy. And so that's why people drink. That's why people smoke. That's why we lower that, that high mind so we can, we can just enjoy and, and flow. You know, and I know when you open up that third eye, that crown chakra, and you open up your imagine, that's the imagination. When you, it's the, the inner eye, when you see inside. When that opens up, uh, everything really changes. And mm. your imagination is, is what's been missing in most of these people because they, they put it all there, but they don't add beauty to it. They don't spice it up. They don't add um, a love for the lessons they've learned. You know, They look at it all as just problems and like David Icke, for example, his book is nothing but truth, but it's hard to digest because it's so cynical. And it's just like you said, when you get into conspiracy, it almost becomes overwhelming and disempowering. But that is the point is to realize that you are powerless to change this material world, the plans, the plans have been in place long before us. We came here to change the narrative because kings have ruled and conquered and killed everything sacred on this plane mm. but the magicians those are the ones who write the history books the king james bible was written by francis bacon so it's the people who add the flavor it's the the writers that really write history and so we need to put beauty in those writings francis bacon is william shakespeare he put all his beauty into shakespeare um and then they kind of transferred that over into us, but that's what we have to do is we have to not let them make us take on a pen name of William Shakespeare. He should have just written the King James Bible from the same perspective with his same creative ability. You know, where are the men like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo now? We're on our way. 
That's what we have to We're do. Here. <laughs> we are here. And yeah, you know, we, we just had a lot of years of distractions, you mm -hmm. know, and I wish that we were focusing on our craft when we were young. Imagine how good we would be. We'd be sculpting things now and, but Hey, it's never too late and we're doing it now. Never too late. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm like you, uh, Jake. I mean, <clears throat> it also in defense of, um, uh, Michael Tassarian, because I've been following his work for quite some time. He is actually a musician. Not a lot of yep, people know this. Mm -hmm. So he does have some creative outlet. He has mm -hmm. taken some, some good um, out of all this knowledge and suffering he's been through. And he's a working class man from Belfast. You know, he didn't yeah. come from a, a privileged background. Um, so he's, he's also, he's not as cynical as the rest. Let's just say that. Um, but yeah, in terms of like the Da Vinci's that you talked about, that's what we're doing in a way, you know, we're, we're now, we're, we're writers, we're orators, we're singers, uh, we're musicians, um, we're poets, uh, we're, we're, you know, I do carpentry uh, as a craft. Mm -hmm. I want, yeah, my um, father's a carpenter, me too. Oh, wow. I, I do. Yeah. Oh, cool, man. <laughs> yeah, we're probably, we, that's what I'm saying, you're my, you're my boy, dude, we would hang out, we probably do very similar stuff <laughs> <laughs> amazing well I, I really hope in this lifetime i can get to meet you in the physical as definitely well. man uh but yeah like we are kind of like honing these different crafts and yeah i mean it's never too late never too late to to pick up a craft as long as your body functions and your brain uh, your, your 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 body and your mind is, is clear and and healthy we can um you know we can keep honing crafts and start new ones and and become the da vinci's become you know um through the creative process and through that that mystery my story that we're we're constantly uh, unfolding and creating so um yeah man it's beautiful that's beautiful. yeah and you are doing it and it's and you it's are important too. it's important for people to see that and to see that through non-competition we we can i just finished this book i'm I, I i like i said i can't talk cool like you paulo coelho he wrote the alchemist that you know the alchemist is probably one of your favorite books it's one of my favorite books um and he wrote this book this new one i just bought it and read it in a day it was called the archer it makes you want to pick Ooh. up a a bow and, and learn how to be an archer because everything is allegory everything is linked together it's all about mastery in, in your awareness of the craft. Mm. And in this book about archery, <laughs> he, it's, it's all in the way we do things. Everything is the same. Everything is a tool. Now, the only thing divine, truly divine and new is creation. The things we create are creative expression how we do that whether it's for shooting a bow playing guitar fighting building a house they're all the same task of of intention and perfecting a discipline because there are no archers born there's no carpenters born there's no scientists no preachers no prophets really born they become they learn. Now, we do that too, but through our education systems and school and the cult of culture, we're told that we have to trust the scientists. We got to trust this interpretation of things. That's why we can't learn. That's why like in America, they don't teach us uh, many other languages because they want you to have translators and interpreters because the power and the twisting lies in the interpretation and they know that the people who run this world know that that mm -hmm. they can they can turn everything upside down just through narrative and rhetoric so in that book the archer it all it kind of boils down to the bow is kind of like our body the bow is matter and the arrow is our intention and whether that shot is going to hit target, which the true meaning for sin is to miss the mark. So whether our sin is going to miss the mark, it's going to happen before we let that arrow go, that arrow of intention go. <laughs> it already hits the target before we let it go. 
You know what I mean? So mm. we all have to align our intention, align our arrow perfectly before we let it go. Because once we let our words out of our mouth, once we let our creation out of our uh, quiver, hmm. we're, we're helpless in the way that people will receive it. So we have to make sure that everything is intentional and purposeful before we express it, before we let this energy go into the collective. And I, I see that with you, um, with Errol. I see it with a lot of people now where we're choosing our words wisely and we're, we're trying to just say more with less. Mm. And we have pretty good systems now. The, the more we build these simulations, the more we can FaceTime each other and do this, the more clear we can show our brothers and our sisters our perspective mm. and from me feeling your perspective i live it you know it's the same way that people can read the bible and feel the presence of jesus it's all in the power of the archetype and the metaphor and the meaning that you put behind it mm. well that that is the the kingdom of heaven lies within isn't it and i mean mm -hmm. that's the the whole expression that that you know whether people believe Jesus existed or not. That doesn't matter. What matters is that, that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus is a, is what is at least a character that uh, mm -hmm. has come and, and spread a message of love. And whether that's through uh, Francis Bacon, as you mentioned, who's William Shakespeare, who's rewritten the King's James Bible. And, um, you know, whether it's Rumi or, or Khalil mm -hmm. Gibran, you know, Love or uh, I mean, th there's so many great uh, Jesus-like archetypes uh, or, mm -hmm. or people uh, throughout history that have come and, and given their wisdom. And we have to take all the all the useful things. It's like what Bruce Lee says, take what is useful, leave out what is useless, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and the reminder of living uh, a life in constant awareness of death um and uh it, it's that awareness that brings you your truth more i think when someone's faced with um with death or even at least the physical death uh they stop the bullshit the bullshit stops you know they get to the core of what they really feel they tell the people they love how they really feel they stop holding mm -hmm. back all those repressed emotions and feelings um and then that that time is not wasted and they know that there's not much to, um even though time is a is another construct of chronos mm. and saturn um you know it, 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 what i'm saying is in this lifetime we we do have the experience of limitation limitation of the uh, physical body uh and although our soul and spirit transcends time and space but it's that time that we have now to to create the soul right and we can't create the soul alone and on an island it's mm -hmm. through the relationships then the other perceptions and perspectives of uh, the way people see you are also reflections of yourself so it's really important to to um, speak your truth and and don't waste life away without um you know purposeful and meaningful expression mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And to be proud of the things that you create, you know, and to know that that's you, that you could go back and watch your videos that you're making right now in 10 years and they'll still be true. You'll still be like, yeah, I still feel the exact same way because that was me. They weren't anybody else's words. They were mine. They were, you know, and we don't remember like the bad dreams that we have. They don't affect us. It's only what we remember that that really affects our our frequency and our perspective. So, and, and just like in that, that book, uh, The Archer, he, he goes on to say that competition is, isn't what the world has told us it is. I'm so thankful when I see someone do something better than I've been doing. You know, that is the hundredth monkey effect. Nobody was able to run a, a four minute mile for forever until one man did it and then everybody started doing it around the world 
because they just, they believe that, hey, this is possible now. These are real effects. The placebo effect works more than regular drugs work. It's all within us. As a medic, one thing that you learn through um, learning about medicine is that no medicine, people, people get it all wrong when they think that they're taking drugs and stuff. It's never adding anything in. It's only changing um, the way you receive, produce, or, or feel the effects of what's already there. We already have DMT in our body. When we use uh, something like DMT externally, it just makes us able to receive with what's already there. Mm. That is fractal with everything that it's already there. The drugs that they use to, to kill us, they only spark parts in us that were laying dormant. And that's what we do through creation. And that's what we do through competition is that when I'm, if I have a, if I, I can think I'm the best, I can think I'm Michael Jordan until the next guy comes along, but that's going to only elevate my game in the end that there are no real enemies here, only adversaries that, that make us better versions of ourselves. Mm. And when you're living in resonance and in line with your destiny and you're on your own path, nobody is standing in your way. You're on your own path. It's the one you're making. There is no one in your way. There is no path. You're making it yourself. Now, when people want to follow the leader, they're going to trip. They're going to get held up by the line and everything you see, um, which is why I see you. I see a lot of people now making their own paths in this world. And it's beautiful, man. There is in the last year, there's been an increase for those already awake. And um, every now and then, even the awakened need to just stop, say la vie, pat themselves on the back and just create something, laugh at everything you've learned because it's ridiculous. You know, this reality is ridiculous. It's a divine comedy. It really is. Yeah. And once you, once you laugh at it and you become that, that fool again, you know, and play in the mystery of my story. It's, it's the most beautiful, most freeing thing we could ever experience. Wow. Yeah, it, it truly is. And I, I, I faced that in a way last year um, when I went through the divorce and I spent the next sort of two months on my own in the house. My ex went and took my, my son with her to, to her parents and I was stuck there on my own after this declaration of divorce. And I thought, wow, what now? And then I went through this grief. And I remember that one evening I was just sat there and I cried. I cried. And then that cry <laughs> turned into laughter, <laughs> hysterical laughter, Jake. I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing from that a moment of crying and grief to laughter. I was like, and after I finished, I was like, wow, I just realized that, that that tragedy is a freaking comedy, man. It's such a fucking comedy, mm -hmm. you know, that I was so engrossed in the suffering of, of, of that loss, but realized that actually that loss was just the stripping away of what was holding me back on my journey of individuation. You mm -hmm. know, the relationship wasn't serving myself the the it, it it was if anything holding me back and you know it was it was serving you it was it, it, was. Ser it was serving me yeah it, it was yeah. serving me it was the but... fire it was the fire that you were you were being forged in really mm, that was it exactly yeah you're right it was serving me in that way and just like the sword which the sword and all metaphor and all art a sword is always intellect and human you know like human true human intellect and a sword is forged in fire, hammering traumas. That's how you make a strong sword. That's how you make a strong intellect and a strong mind. So I'm with you. I'm, I'm divorced too. You know, I, I've gone through that same thing. And on a side note from just one dude to another with creativity, watch the movie. I just watched it the other night. Tearjerker, cried, beautiful, laughed, loved it, called Blue Valentine. Oh, right. Never heard so, of it. Yeah. Blue I'll do Valentine. It really good. Yeah, it's a slow one, but it's about a relationship. And it's very similar to 
not not exactly similar, but it's very similar to my experience with marriage and fatherhood, um, with disappointment, disappointing myself. Um, and it's healing when you watch something like that and you can mm. see yourself reflected in these characters and the choices they make. Because when we're stuck in those patterns, like I'm sure, you know, when we're when we're honest with ourselves, we could see that we were stuck in patterns of trauma. We were, we were acting in ways that were more out of habit than out of who we really are. Mm. And I was disappointed in myself throughout my marriage because I, I was never able to be who I truly am, who I am now. Mm. Um, and it, as much as you can want to blame it on your significant other, it's our fault for allowing us hmm. to ever be censored, to ever be silenced, to ever be anybody but us. And once you realize that, you really do have to laugh that because it was you all along, you yeah. know, it was you that put yourself through this becoming. Mm -hmm. And when when you can turn those tears into into laughter, that is alchemy. That's the lead into gold. Hundred percent, mm -hmm. brother. Wow. Yeah. Beautifully said there, brother. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is, in fact, it, it was my ex who, who was my greatest teacher that made mm -hmm. me realize the error of my own way rather than it's so easy for people that uh, end uh, relationships or, you know, split up to blame each other. I'm actually in a, in a good place with her now, you know, if anything, mm -hmm. it's too. actually given us the space and to be ourselves more. Yep. Uh, and what a great teacher. Every relationship is, is a teacher in a way mm -hmm. to yourself because you wouldn't be in those relationships in the first place if it wasn't there yep. as part of your journey of growth and, and, and development, you know? So, and you know, there, that's just every relationship, every interaction is just a mirror with a, a aspect of yourself. And sometimes mm. uh, that new energy, that new person that is, like no one you've ever met is just a part of you that you haven't expressed yet. Um, and you're really just meeting a part of you for the first time. And that's why like me, I'm a, I'm a hopeless romantic man. You know, <laughs> if I meet a beautiful divine feminine, you know, I, I love it, but I've been, I've been conditioned it my whole life to be the masculine, you know, and through, I've always been an artist like you and a musician and had, outlets to express my feminine aspect hmm. but i was always uh i don't know if i would even say i was i wasn't scared or anything it was just i was just conditioned to operate from a masculine attitude you know all my situations like in my in my marriage they were all being led by my masculine drives, my masculine preconditions, you know, the, the order, putting order to things, everything has to, I got to fix things, everything. I, I was always working on something, you know, a man making his ma way in this world. And I was out of balance. And when, I, when you're out of, that's how this twin flame stuff works. It's okay if people are truly happy and we're all, on our own process and our own incarnation or cycle. And sometimes people need to play the villain in this life and die the villain. So that way they can be the hero next time. Um, but sometimes we just have to play these roles and maybe someone's a really healthy divine masculine. He will find his twin flame or his soulmate that should be a divine feminine. That's very rare. Hmm. I prefer to be a whole being. I know in my incarnation cycle, Life Path 11, I came here for a reason. I'm on a solo mission, probably. Now, I loved my um, ex-wife, and I still do. Of course, I love, I love you. I love a lot of things. And I love my children more than anything I could ever express. However, it is a solo mission. Hmm. everything is is me everything is mine it's it's me here inside my head all the time um 
And my purpose now where I'm at is to balance that feminine aspect, like we talked about, especially with your vision, where you go from a tiger to a snake and from the masculine to the feminine, and then eventually harmonizing, going back into your body and becoming a human. Hmm. Um, And I see that in you. And unfortunately for me, I needed divorce. I needed that dark night of the soul. I needed to stop. I needed to lay my weapons down and stop trying to slay the dragon that was um, the divine feminine mm. through conquering her through through that masculine need and desire to conquer the feminine and and rescue the damsel when you know the feminine is just as powerful they don't need rescuing you know mm. um, they need integration and understanding and I needed to lose I needed to to, to decidedly lose through like divorce hmm. to learn that lesson. Unfortunately, I'm a hard learner. You and me both brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think all of us in this path are hard learners. Um, and I think it's, it's a sort of um, thing is that what was that word from the Highlander movies, the quickening, there's a quickening yep. to it. Um, so the destruction comes hard, it comes fast and through that the transmutation journey actually happens in a very quickened way so it doesn't take years seven years to be in this sort of path of of it and um i really feel that that yeah it is a solo mission but also it doesn't exclude the fact that you know you are going to meet somebody that's going to match match who you are, that you are in a harmonious state with. I think only through the awareness that we have now that we can actually uh, create harmonious relationships. Not to say that it won't have arguments or, or, or uh, conflict, but that's part of the whole uh, thing. But it's the sort of, it's like the analogy of swans, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, a swan chooses only one partner and they most of the time stay stay with that until their death and then they do the swan the, the, the flight of the swan you know um or the dance of the swan if, if i remember correctly but e- either way it's it's um there is a beauty in 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 being with a divine feminine woman who uh, is in a similar path to you mm-hmm. and how beautiful it is to share that as well uh but then you can also share that with friends you can share that with uh you know with your with your creativity and there's many ways to share it but um yeah it's it's a it's an interesting life we live jake it's really an interesting life and you know the reason why like your your relationship with your ex is good and you know mine is too is because we balance we we became balanced we we're all dying slowly (laughs) our ego at least and those those ego deaths through psychedelics or catastrophe and life change, um, that is the quickening that that quick ego death. Instead of the slow, a thousand cuts that most people get over just life, everyday life, slowly killing them spiritually, where we just martyred ourselves and now we're reborn. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be able to speak. Um, with a divine feminine, the way I speak to you and to have the opportunity to show the other polarity and I guess sexuality, you know, our energy to show our masculine side, our true authentic self, you know, what a real balanced masculine looks like and to acknowledge their divine feminine side you know Mm -hmm. and how powerful and beautiful and i know for me that aspect always adds inspiration you know that's the muse is is the feminine energy to me that's that's the creativity that's i mean just look at how we dress compared to how they dress they're they know style and flavor everything is individual you know Mm -hmm. and men have a lot to learn especially today from men need to learn from their mothers Mm. and we really also need to learn how to be fathers Mm. and learn from our fathers but be fathers ourselves uh because that's 
the father son paradox, just like the, the father son paradox is the, the divine masculine. Everything else is feminine. This world, the womb, from womb to tomb, it's all, it, it's all a matrix. It's all feminine, creative energy waiting to be expressed, mm. waiting to birth something new and infinite. And it's through the ordering of our thoughts and actions, which is the masculine logical mind and the intellect, when we integrate that, that masculine we add the interpretation to the information with the feminine that leads to this unbelievable outpouring of creativity like you are experiencing now, because now you're able to dive into the depths of your psyche and the collective shadow, the collective psyche to tap into the myths, the metaphors, the archetypes, the writings of others and pull out meaning and in your own interpretation of the world around you, because the, we, we don't remember Jesus or um, any of these people or Hitler because of the, what they wrote. We remember them because of what others wrote about them mm -hmm. and what others wrote about their words and their interactions with them. So we do need to make our own creations, but like you said, it isn't a solo mission in the fact that we all are, are inner, we need to interact with each other as much as possible on a highly spiritual, authentic, intellectual level, mm -hmm. because through that is how we raise this whole thing up. Mm, absolutely. And that's what's been uh, so, you know, so prevalent in, in our age is, is the, uh, feminization, the ultra, uh, I call it the ultra feminization of society. And we see that in the communistic technocratic uh, takeover that we are, are, are you know, seeing so-called seeing in the narrative being played out. Um, but that's what's been happening to women. Uh, and and uh, Michael Tassarin talks about this in great depth is about the, the, the only way to control the men is through the women. So actually, mm -hmm. the aim, the, the main psychological psyop that's been going on is mostly aimed at women. 100%. And it's because of the, he called it the sem semiotic stage of when the, the, the child is in the womb. And the, if the mother is in a state of fear or in a state of, um, she's not herself, that information goes into the child. And so does it does it the same way when they give birth to the child those first nine months are the most important the pre nine months and the post nine months are the most important because all the information downloads of of thousands of years of ancestry is in that moment where the mother is mothering and nurturing the child and passing on the dna and information and knowledge to the child pre-symbolic pre-language mm -hmm. uh, in that way so that's why they know this the the the, the people and the the powers that shouldn't be know this and i think that's why uh, also we have to bring the divine masculine into play uh and again balance with the feminine this is what it's all about it's about balance yep so and the divine masculine is what john lamb lash would would say is the anthropos mm -hmm. you know that true human spirit of source sophia is feminine the archons the demiurge was masculine but not in the way that that w that we are that the anthropos is he wasn't human inverted and, masculine yes absolutely mm. um conquering you know and, and on the conspiratorial side the very interesting part i'm i'm a i think there's like a couple of ways to really crack the codes of the matrix words you know language symbols you know artwork symbols and metaphor those are probably the ways that you really could see what is really going on in reality is through the deacon and deconstruction of language is a, a big one mm. <laughs> deconstruction of language is a huge one and so is metaphor and the interesting part it seems this whole world was at once um 
nothing but females, that there weren't any males here. When you go back and you look at the oldest depictions of cultures and civilizations, you know, Sumer, past Sumer, um, everything, all the old cuneiform tablets, the oldest depictions of earth were all women. Now, <laughs> there is mm. something that I believe that's been probably genetically altered. It's all about, everything's all about reproduction with these archons and trying to to kill our ability to reproduce. So I think at first, women were able to have birth through this word called parthenogenesis. There's at least 50 species still today, which it's always lizards, lizards, reptiles, of course, like the Draco, um, they all have the ability for parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is what happened with the Virgin Mary. It's an immaculate conception. We are able to do this nowadays scientifically through electrical stimulation. They've been able to have women have babies all on their own, just through just through this parthenogenesis, um, which, like wow. I said, Komodo Komodo dragons don't. They might not even have a mate and just create a genetic clone. You know, Queen Elizabeth making another Queen Elizabeth type shit. <laughs> really freaky stuff. So it appears that the originals the ab originals here were probably female. The archons, these invader species, whether they're from probably the, the Pleiades, uh, who knows, or just coded into this simulation, they came here as males. Mm. Some people believe it could have been to serve a purpose, like maybe the energies became that align or they grew to a point where the, the feminine energy needed masculine protection because they first started showing up in depictions as warriors like there'd be a few males acting as guardsmen for the women you know like a like a colony of, of bees or ants kind of you know that's what our role was for a long time and then came the anglos which we speak english english is anglo which means angels so there is even proof etymologically um, through our language, a point of insertion where it seems the angels, the fallen ones, mm. um, the white race of humanoids came here, the sailors, angel and angel, angel and alien means sailor. Everything worship is from worship. Everything seems to be the waters above from the waters below. UFOs are exactly like us on a ship catching a fish different levels of reality and these anglos became alexander the greats they became um the second <laughs> the second word is super fecundation or something like that mm -hmm. it's it's a scientific term where two men where a woman can have twins from two different men biologically two different men congenital twins. It's what happened with Cain and Abel, they said. So, because what would happen is these archons started showing up as these women's men in their sleep, like a succubus or an incubus. Um, they wouldn't show up as the devil. They would show up as their husbands. And mm. supposedly that's what the devil did with um, Eve and created Cain and Abel, who by the killing of Abel, we made cannibals. Cain and Abel equals cannibals. Mm. So that was the insertion of this archontic bloodline, this archontic energy into our humanity. John Lamb Lash and the Gnostics all talk about the Anthropos, the emergence of the Anthropos. That is our purpose here. That is bringing humanity back and taking back are avatars that have been genetically modified. Now they're doing it with vaccines. Mm. It doesn't matter. They could, I hate it when people say, I, I'll never get vaccinated 100%, but I, I have friends and family members that have, and it's never too late for me. It's never too late for you. It's never too late for them. Mm. We're all dying. It's a suicide mission incarnation. And <laughs> by condemning yourself, that's the only only truth there is that it's, it's never too late it doesn't matter what they do to our bodies it's how we behave our humanity our creation our emergence of the divine anthropos mm. so 
there is so much truth to the war on women and their ability to create life. They are the ultimate creators. They are infinite. A woman through their birth canal is truly infinite. They give birth to their own futures, hmm. which is unbelievably um, powerful. I couldn't imagine that. You know, I'm a father like you. We, we that's the most beautiful creation, and I'm so thankful for their gift to be able to do that. And I, we as men now, it's definitely up to us, and more important than ever, that we protect our women, we protect our children, and we protect our humanity and truth along the way absolutely yeah wow i mean what what a deep insight as well into the uh the feminine i i i've always entered well did my best to understand the human condition as best or understand the human condition as best as i could and it makes sense because if the planet is feminine of course that's intrinsically linked with the female of the species so yes, um, I feel that that the my instinct though with this um, splitting, this schism that's happened, mm -hmm. the splitting splitting of the left and the right, the duality that's been created by these archons in a way, uh, mm -hmm. rather than being holistic, a whole, like you said, you know, women are able to give birth on their own. But I feel that I felt like they've rather than that they've created uh, the male. It, I think they've removed something within the female and split it into the male so we are in a way a missing piece of the female mm -hmm. that makes sense absolutely um, so that we, we are the hero that or the hero or the protector that was formed outside of themselves and once mm -hmm. you have a savior you can't be your own mm -hmm. and that's a lesson everybody needs to learn that is still going to church still doing you know still involved in religion or still has a savior if you have a savior you will never save yourself so i i i believe that that that's what jesus was telling us nietzsche one of my favorite writers he stated there was only one christian and he died on the cross that is the truth the the cross that people wear around their necks it was a a torture device you know that was the hangman's noose that we're worshiping it's they pervert all of our symbols don't and and we all fall for it you know it's what they did with the swastika when really that cross they say that that cross was what the archons what the invader species came here wearing on their arms was was that red knights of malta the same thing that yeah, I wear the cross on my, of lorraine yeah. yeah, the same thing I wear on my uh, badge every time I go to work, um, a Maltese cross, you know, it's all Knights mm -hmm. Templar. It's that red cross that's showing the equilibrium, the split between matter and spirit, masculine, feminine, divine, uh, and evil, you know, it's, it, that's what the cross always represents. Mm -hmm. So, and then we build religions and superstitions and dogmas around all of these just truths that you know inherently they're just true that's mm. and once you see it you don't have to worship it anymore that cross is already in us we live it every day by balancing and finding equilibrium in this world we, you become the cross you become the sword you become the savior you become all of these things when you tap into the collective consciousness of humanity beautiful jake I think we're, we're coming up to the, the, the near two hour mark. Oh, uh, damn. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're not in time. Uh, we're in the flow and that's um, I'm just conscious of the time because obviously our viewers, I, I, I would love to have you on again, Jake, because I, I really man. appreciate you and I appreciate the, the depth at which we can go into these conversations. And uh, I feel there's a lot more to explore uh, and uh, um, uh, I, I believe from what I heard in your uh, most recent video interview, you have a book coming out. Uh, can yes. you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, my, my YouTube channel is The 100th Monkey Jake Parsons. And I'll link it below, I'm writing by the a way. book. Awesome, mm -hmm. thank you. And 
I'm writing a book right now called Everyday Alchemy. And it's based on these old alchemical texts that just show an image. And but the image has so much symbolism and meaning behind it. So through each video, through each chapter, it's basically showing a 15 step process towards becoming you and becoming whole and one with the universe. And it's not as woo woo. People think all this stuff is all crazy. You know, like when we try to talk to like a normal friend about this stuff, but it's just what psychology is. It's what Carl Jung called individuation. It's just, it's, it is the point of every self-help book and every psychology is to show your subconscious to your conscious mind and interpret it in a way that's healthy for your being. Um, so through this book that I'm writing, I'm just trying to do it in a way like you. Um, and dude, you helped me a lot with this stuff. You know, I mean, this conversation is going to help me write more of this book um, because it's everyday alchemy for a reason. It's these interactions that lead to a better you. It's, it's these conversations that, that increase our, our energy. I mean, you know, how much energy did I just get from you and, and I'm give to you? Closer, it, yeah. we're, exactly. And once we understand that and can, can get in the habit and the pattern of living that love every single day, um, you start to see, you get the shine in the eyes like you have right now, you know, because it's, it's all within, you get this power, the glow, you get the halo, the King's crown, the crown chakra. Um, you get the real coronavirus, not the one that they want to pervert because it's funny. It's uh, upside down. They're going to tell you the corona, coronavirus is bad. Nah, dog. We already got it. Our tinfoil hats turn to golden crowns of insight and imagination and intellect. So wear the corona, wear the crown. Um, and that's what this book is all about. So, yeah, hopefully everybody checks it out. It's on a playlist called The Book of Lamb Spring, and that will play them all in order. Oh, they're, they're, they're absolutely wonderful. Every single one of them. And I've watched them. And there's other videos there on too. So yeah, please check out uh, uh, Jake's channel, which I'll link down below. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your time, Jake. I really appreciate Thanks, your time and all the insights and this enriching conversation we've had. And uh, I, I, I'm sure that our viewers as well will We'll, we'll love it too. So thank you. Love you, brother. And, uh, love you too, brother. I appreciate and it. Look forward to having you on again. Definitely.